words of faith and to the earth spiritual seed that bring both a spiritual harvest and a natural physical manifestation into my life I have no cares for I cast the whole of my cares over on Jesus for he cares for me I have no heavy burdens because I've taken Jesus' yoke, which is easy, and his burden, which is light. I will not allow my soul to be cast down, for I put my hope and trust in God. I am above only and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am one spirit with God and I abide in him always. I have the mind of Jesus Christ and the wisdom of God flows in me and through me. My body is the temple of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, for the fullness of God dwells in me. I tread upon serpents and scorpions, and I exercise righteous authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. I am skilled in the word of righteousness, and I call things that be not as though they were. I will not fear what man or spirit can do unto me, because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ covers my spirit, soul, and body and has sanctified me and separated me from the world, the flesh, and the devil. I not only have my senses exercised to discern both good and evil, but I aggressively come against the kingdom of darkness and spoil every plot and scheme Satan has waged against me and those around me. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I take my shield of faith and quench Satan's every fiery dart. I will not be distracted from doing the will of God, and I will not stray to the left hand or to the right. I have sound judgment and discretion, and I refuse to be deceived by Satan in any way. My mind is sharp, and my spirit is keenly sensitive to disturbances in the spirit realm. I watch and pray and prevent evil from taking place because the Holy Spirit shows me things to come. I am equipped with spiritual armor and weaponry, and I am never caught off guard by the wicked one. I sow fruits of righteousness and will never back down from the truth. I am bold as a lion, and I refuse to be intimidated by the enemy. All things are mine, and I exercise dominion over the earth. I reign in life by Jesus Christ through grace and righteousness. My love weapon cast out fear, and I aggressively love others unconditionally, for love never fails. All of my days are filled with abundance and prosperity because Jesus is Lord over all. I choose to be a vessel through which he, his will can be done in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for the covenant of divine help that I have as a child of God. I declare that I am redeemed from the curse, sickness, disease, and the COVID-19 virus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus permeates every cell in my body and has made me free from the law of sin and death. Lord, thank you for sending your word and healing me and delivering me from destruction. I declare that every disease, germ, and virus that tries to attack my body dies instantly. Every cell of my body is virus-free and full of life. 
My immune system is strong and continuously quickened with the life of God. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and my family and declare that no weapon formed against our health shall prosper. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, you are my refuge and fortress, and in you I trust. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague, disease, or virus come nigh my dwelling, because I have made the Lord my habitation. You have given your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. You will deliver me and honor me, and with long life you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. In Jesus' name. Could I
to break out. God, that you tear down strongholds, that you tear our walls down, God. That's what we ask you to do today, Lord.
of Pastor Stephen Young Hunt, we would like to welcome you to True Divine on this wonderful Sunday morning. So at this time, let's just take this moment to, to wave at your neighbor from a distance, say hello, how you doing? It's a good day to be alive, amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice, and we are going to be glad in it, regardless of the circumstance, amen. Amen. Now, to our e-campus those in the sanctuary, we are so glad that you are able to worship with us on this wonderful Sunday morning. Now, just as a reminder, please remember to wear your mask, your gloves, wear appropriate, and continue to practice social distancing while you're here on campus at True Divine because it's always our prayer here at True Divine that you may have a God experience. Amen. Well, that's all I have for you this morning. So let's give it up for our wonderful worship arts ministry once again. Come on, let's bless them. Real Hallelujah. good, amen. Come on, he said give it up for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is anybody in the room like me? I know I'm asking you a lot of questions today, but is anybody in the room like me? And sometimes you struggle with faith. Sometimes it gets a little bit hard to believe and to, to really see what it is that God has for you because of what it looks like around you. This song, it reminds me of Peter when God told him to step out of the boat. He said, have faith enough for me to step out of the boat and walk on the water with me. And I can imagine, Peter was like, walk on the water. You know how we do, we question everything, right? But in this season, I'm asking God to increase my faith. God, increase my faith so that I may step out of that boat and walk on water with you. God, help my unbelief. Take the limits off, God. Take the limits off. Take the limits off, Lord. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fill. And there I find you. But this is what I'm going to do. And I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I
by your God. Father, we thank you for this great day that you have given us, Lord. And now, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you touch my lips like you did, Jeremiah, so that I may be able to speak the oracle of your words. I pray, Lord, that I decrease as you increase. I pray, Lord, that you begin to shift all over this room so that people may be able to hear your word. For we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory for being the great God that you are. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, how's everybody doing on this wonderful Sunday morning? Y'all doing all right up in here? Amen. Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, before I get started here, I know some of you are probably surprised. Oh, Pastor Hill on this wonderful Sunday morning. Yes, me again. It's been a while, but I'm here. Thank God. Amen. But before I get started, I just want to thank Pastor Hunt and our first lady uh, for giving me this opportunity to preach the word of God uh, to you today. It's always a, a great joy to be able to preach the gospel before God's people. So, so uh, we're going to go ahead and dab on into the word of God today. Uh, la for the last three to four weeks here, Pastor has been preaching a powerful message unto us about shifting. And he said to us that we should have it by now. But just in case you hadn't gotten it, that's what I'm here for today. I'm, I'm going to try to help you to get going, to shift if you hadn't already shifted. Now, by, if, after today, if you hadn't got it, all we can do is pray for you and pray that you catch up. Amen? So, so we're going we're gonna to get, get ahead and get on in the word. And, and when I begin to ask God, Lord, what is the message that I can give to the people? And there was a couple calls come to mind. I know some of you may be thinking different models of cars, but what I'm referring to the different types of transmission that cars have. You got one car that has an automatic transmission. Now, this is the car that most people like driving. You, it's, it's an easy drive. You, you put the car in drive, press the gas, and the car does the shifting for you. It's sweatless. But when it comes to a manual transmission car, a stick shift, the one that has a clutch, like that old Toyota, I think, Pastor had, you know, this one, people don't tend to want to drive because it requires work. You see, you see, if you plan on going anywhere, if you plan on doing anything, accomplishing anything, in order to move, you got to shift the gears for yourself. So likewise, when it comes to life, if you plan on accomplishing anything, if you plan on going anywhere, you got to shift for yourself because no one ain't going to do it for you. And if you don't do it, you may move, but you ain't going very far. And so today, my subject is shifting your way through life. I'm going to say it again. Shifting your way through life. And so we're going to look at Moses here. Moses is going to, I'm not going to go through uh, his whole life, but just some of his life that he had to shift his way through life. Where God was trying to take him, he had to shift. And so that's, let's look at Exodus 3, 1 through 4. We're going to come out the message. Now, there are some prerequisites that you must have in order to shift your way through life. Now, the first prerequisite that you must have in order to shift your way through life, you must have a desire to shift. I'm going to say it again. You must have a desire to shift. Before a car can even move, before you even talk about shifting a gear when it comes to a car, you first must have a desire to get into the car. Because if you don't have a desire to get into the car, you're not going to go anywhere at all. You're not going to do anything. So let's look at Moses here. If you would, put that up for me, please. Exodus 3, 1 through 4. Y'all all right? Y'all good? Now, I want you to buckle up here, and we're going uh, to go on a ride. Now, one thing I must tell you, you can't ride with everybody because there's some people riding up on the influence, alcohol, drugs, substance. If you ain't careful, you get your head skinned. But today, we ride with God, amen? So we're going to get going here. So let's look at Moses. He said, 
Moses, now let me bring you up to speed here with Moses. Let me bring you up first up to speed before I get going. Here, you know, of course, for those who know the story, Moses, um, you know, he was raised by the Egyptians. And Moses ended up, Moses had done that. Moses had to get up out of camp. He said, I got to go. And so when he ended up, he ended up, uh, ended up coming into contact with his father-in-law, which is now, is Jephro, which is the priest of the Midians. So that's what he said. Moses was shepherd the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He said, he led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. Now, let's stop right there for a moment. Now, here, Moses is in a good place. He's in a good place. Moses then got married. Moses got a J-O-B. He got children. And, but he doing, he, he, he good. And, but the thing about Moses is that God got something greater for Moses. God is going to need Moses to shift, just like some of you. You may, you're in a good place. You have gotten married. You, you could be single. You got a good job. Things going well for you, and you're in a good place. And you, but you know that God is calling you to something greater. Now, I don't know what that greater is. Your greater may be to empower men, to empower women, maybe to, uh, to preach the gospel. Whatever it is, you know, and you know that God needs you to shift. Let's go. And said, the angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire and blaze out of the middle of a bush. He looked. And said, the bush will blaze away, but it didn't burn up. And said, Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? And said, God saw that he stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush. And said, Moses, Moses, he said, yes, I am right here. At this moment, Mo God knew that Moses had a desire to shift because the moment that the Bible said Moses turned and said, yes, here I am, that's the moment God knew that he had a desire to shift. So likewise, when it comes to us, if you're ever going to accomplish anything in life, you got to have a desire to work and make money. You got to have a desire to go to church. You got to have a desire to go to the doctor and get your health checked out. You got to have a desire to eat healthy. You got to have a desire to go to college and get a degree. You got to have a desire to read your word so that you can be spiritually fed. You got to have a desire. You see, if you don't have no desire to do anything, you can't get going nowhere. Amen? You got to have a desire. So the next one I want to talk about, the next prerequisite is you must have some courage and not make excuses. I'm going to say it again. You must have some courage and not make excuses. So let's go to Exodus 4. 2 through 12. And this is what it reads as Father said. So God said, now here, this is what God is trying to do here. He wanted, he trying to, he wanted to empower Moses. He said, God said, what's that in your hand? A staff, a staff, a staff, a staff. Throw it on the ground. He threw it. It became a snake. Moses jumped back fast. So that, that tells me Moses had, he had a look courage because some of you, you wouldn't just jump back. You would have took off running and never came back. Amen. Verse 4, he said, God said to Moses, reach out and grab it by the tail. He reached out and grabbed it, and he was holding his staff again. He said, that's so that they will trust that God appeared to you, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and said, the God of Jacob. He said, God then said, put your hand inside your shirt. He slipped his hand under his shirt, then took it out. He said, his hand had turned leprous, like snow. He said, put your hand back under your shirt. He did it, then took it back out, as healthy as before. 
He said, so if they don't trust you and aren't convinced by the first sign, the second sign should do it. But if it doesn't, he said, if even after these two signs, they don't trust you and listen to your message, take some water out of now and pour it out on the dry land, the now water that you pour out will turn to blood when it hits the ground. So let's stop right here. So what God here is trying to do, God is trying to empower Moses to shift. God is trying to get Moses to shift, trying to give him some courage here because he knows that in order for Moses to lead God's people, he got to have some courage. So likewise, when, it, when God told Jacob, he said, Jacob, be strong and courageous because if you're not, you're not going to be able to lead my people. And so when it comes to courage, you know, just like the lion, when it came to the wheels of the all, all y'all seen the wheels of the all? But the lion, he did not have no courage. In order for him to be the king of the beast, in order for, for the animals to, to respect him, he had to have some courage. So likewise, when it comes to us, in order for us to shift our way through life, we got to have some courage, amen. Because the Bible says that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but a love, power, and sound mind. So if God did not give it unto us, who gave it to us? Satan, because Satan don't want you to accomplish anything in life. Satan wants you to stay right there. He wants you to stay in park. He wants you to stay in neutral. He don't want you to do anything. All he wants you to do is stand still and become stagnant. He'll try to put that fear into your heart. Let's go on. And Moses raised, now here, this is when Moses finished, make an excuse. He said, Moses, raise another objection to God. He said, Master, please, Moses begging, literally begging right here. He said, I don't talk well. I've never been good with words. He said, neither before nor you spoke to me, I stutter and stammer. This is an excuse by Moses that this is an excuse by Moses. Go to Acts 7, 20 through 22. Put that up for me, please. See, God ain't got time for excuses. See, if you ever gonna accomplish anything in life, you can't be making excuses why you can't and can't do a thing. Amen? You can't make excuses. So put that up. Acts 7, 20 through 22 in King James Version. Moses making an excuse. He said, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up his father's house three months. And he, when he had, was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And said, Moses will learn in all the wisdom of the Egyptian and was mighty in words and in deeds. So what that tell me that the Bible does not contradict itself. It is telling me that Moses is making an excuse of why he can and can't do a thing. You take it right now, ever since the pandemic hit, people have been making all kind of excuses why they can't do the thing. I can't go to church, I can't go to work, I can't do this, I can't do that. And God said, it's time out for these excuses. If you're going to get going, I need you to stop making excuses. You take it with me last week. Now, I really wasn't planning on telling you guys this. I really wasn't, but you know, I tried to be as transparent as possible. Now, my wife, she like when I be trans transparent towards myself. She don't like me to be transparent towards her and my son, you know. You know how <laughs> but anyway, I try to be transparent as possible. You know, and uh, last week, me and Pastor was sitting in the office and, you know, we were sitting there just talking like we normally would do. And, and uh, you know, we may be talking about sports, whatever it may be. And then he threw me a curveball. He said, preacher. Well, I don't think he said preacher. I think he said, Rem. Rem. Fifth Sunday coming, I need you to preach. I said, 
what? Preach. Like I, you know, I'm like, man, you've been preaching good for the last eight months. Why you need me up preaching now? I said, I ain't got to preach. You've been doing a great job. And I began to make all kinds of excuses why I couldn't do a thing. And then what well, pastor looked at me and said, he said, man, what you mean? You can't preach. He said, it's time to get going. It's time to shift. He said, you ain't got time to be talking about that. And then the spirit started convicting me. And it started telling me, son, you were called for such a time as this. You are a peculiar generation. That's nothing you can't do. He said, what man grabs hold to the plow and look back for he ain't even fit for the kingdom? I had to get my spirit right because I knew that it was time to shift. And so likewise with you, you got to know it is time to shift because if you're going to get going, if you're going to accomplish anything, you got to have some courage and you can't be making excuses while you can't do a thing. God, God, God I already give you everything that you need. That's what he was trying to talk, tell, show Moses. That Moses, I'm giving you everything that you need to make it in this world today. In order to get my church out of, out of Egypt, I'm going to be right there with you. Let's go back to Exodus. Let's go back. And we're going to go back to Exodus 4, 11 through 12. And let's see what God has to say to Moses after he made this excuse. Y'all with me? So God said to Moses, and God is saying to you, and who do you think made the human mouth? Moses? Talk to me. And who makes some mute, some deaf, some sighted? Go on. Some blind. He said, isn't it I, God. He said, isn't it our God who has done all this? So all them excuses you are making, you got to know I can take away and I can give. I can bless and I can take away. Whatever needs to be done, I can do it. And then this is what God tell Moses. He looked at him and said, so, get going, Moses. And I come to tell you today, get going. Because if you don't get going, you're going to be left behind. And God said, when you get going, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be right there with you, with your mouth. I'll be right there to teach you what to say. God said, I just need you to get going. And that's what a lot of people right now, they ain't going nowhere. They stop. And God said, I need you to get going. I know I never told you that it wasn't going to be easy. I never told you it was going to be easy. Never told you this. But if you're going to do my will, you're going to do the work for me, you got to get going. Yeah. And that's the same thing that I had to do when pastor told me to preach. I knew that I had to get going. Amen. All right. Y'all still with me? I promise you I ain't going to be long today. I promise you I'm not going to be long today. And let's go to Psalms 91. I'm about to wrap this thing up. I ain't going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not long winded like Pastor. Ain't it right, Pastor? I'm not long winded like the MO. G. <laughs> Y'all going to get out of here on time today. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Good time. You go home and catch, go to the Waffle House, get some breakfast, I hop, or whatever. You know, eat good this morning. Yum, yum. <laughs> Pancakes, grits, bacon, sausage. Let me be quiet. Y'all gonna be walking up out here now. So let's go ahead. So, in Psalms 91, my next, my, my next prerequisite is you, you, you must trust the process God is taking you through. I'm going to say it again. You must trust the process that God is taking you through. Now, there's this famous, there's this famous coach by the name of Nick Saban. 
that coached this famous team called Alabama. And I ain't just saying this because I'm an Alabama fan, but I hear him say this all the time. Nick Saban always tell his team, he said, if you want to win, if you want to win national championship, he said, you got to trust the process. You see, that's why, that's why Job was able to say this, though you slay me, yet would I trust you because I trust the process, God, that you are taking me through. You see, the reason why the children of Israel could not get into the promised land because they did not trust the process that God was taking them through. You see, when you trust the process of God, he'll cause you to be the head and not the tail. When you trust the process of God, he'll cause you to be above and not beneath. When you trust the process of God, he'll send the angels out to protect you from any hurt and harm or danger. When you trust the process of God, he'll be a bridge over troubled water. When you trust the process of God, he'll be your strong tower and the righteous shall right in to it when you trust the process of God he will open doors that no man can close when you trust the process you got to trust the process people of God we ain't serving no weak God we serve one who is strong and mighty strong and mighty he said he'll be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And you just trust the process. And what God is saying, I don't want you to be left behind. I just need you to trust the process. Woo, I can stop right there. But I got to go on. I got to go on. So let's put Psalm 91 up in the message. Now, now this is the thing I want you to get here when... I began to read Psalms 91. I want you to think of yourself. Not your brother, your sister, your mama, your daddy, your husband, your wife. I want you to think of you. Because you are the one who got to be the one to shift. Can't nobody do it for you. You got to do this thing for yourself. So let's look at Psalms 91. This is what it says. He said, you who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. You who come to church every day. You who fast and pray. You the one who spend time with God. He said, say this, and I want you to repeat this after me. God, you are my refuge. I trust in you, and I'm safe. Say it again, God, go back. You are my refuge. I trust in you, and I'm safe. Say it again, God, you are my refuge. I trust in you, and I am safe. That's what God said to you. That's what he's saying. Go on. He said, that's right. He rescues you from hidden traps. Shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outreach arms protect you. Under them, you are perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Then he said, fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night. Not flying arrows in the day, not disease, corona, that prowls through the darkness. Not disaster that erupts at high noon. He said, like, even though others succumb all around you, even though others die all around you, drop like flies right and left. No harm, <laughs> hallelujah, will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Look at God, what he's doing. Watch the wicked.
turn it to a corpse. Yes, because God's your refuge. The high God, your very home, home. Say, so even evil can't get close to you, harm can't get the, through the door to you. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. Hallelujah. He said, this is what he said. He said, if you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. God said, I send angels out there just for you to keep you from falling. If you fall, they're going to pick you up. He said, you'll walk on home among lions and snakes and kick your lions and serpents from the path. He said, if you hold on to me for dear life, he said, you just hold on. Hold on. Hold on for a change is coming. Says God. He said, I'll get you out of any trouble. Then he said, I give you the best of care. I remember when Pastor was telling us he had Corona. But he also said that when he had it, they gave him the best of care. Even though you may catch a thing, God is always going to be there to perfect the thing. Amen. He said, if you only get to know and trust me. That's why Proverbs say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding and all thy ways. Acknowledge him. And guess what he'll do? He said, he will direct your path. And then he said, call me, and I answer. You see, there's a lot of people you have called in your past, and they don't answer. Sometimes you'll call your mama, and they ain't answer. Sometimes you call your brother, and they ask. For whatever reason, they didn't answer. They didn't answer. But what God said, you call me, and I answer. He said, be at your side in bad times. Now, how y'all know we're having some bad times right now? Some real bad times. God said, I'll be at your side. And then this way he said, I rescue you, then throw you a party. Come on, give God some praise up here. God said, when you shift your way through life, what we're going to do, he's going to shift in the overdrive. And when he shifts in overdrive, he said, we're going to ride this thing out like that big deuce in the quarter. It just rock, rock. He said, we're going to have a party because pastor already told us we should already have shift. Woo! And then he said, I give you a long life. Give you a long drink of salvation. Because that's just how much our God loves us. God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, whenever you need me, just call on me. I'm going to be there. I'm going to send angels out. To protect you and you stumble, I'm gonna pick you up. Amen. May God bless you. I pray this word has has truly blessed you. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word today. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to hear the word. I pray, Lord, that this word has not fallen on deaf ears. And Father, I just pray that your people that hasn't shifted, that you would give them the power to shift, to shift to the next dimension, to shift to wherever you may need them to go. And while they are shifting, Father, they'll know that you are always there for them. For you said in your word that you, I know the thoughts that I think towards you thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. And Father, we thank you for being so good and so great unto us. Even when we don't deserve it, you're still there to help us to shift our way through life. For we give you praise and we do give you glory. And may we all say, amen. May God bless you. I pray that 
you have enjoyed the message. We're going to have the choir. They're going to bless us. Amen. 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 Come on, will y'all bless God for Pastor Hill this morning? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Well, it is time to give. Amen. It's time to give. Praise God. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Go ahead and prepare your offering here at the sanctuary and for all of those that are on our e-campus and our social media platforms. Amen. Prepare to give. If you want to text to give this morning, you can. If you'll follow that information that is on the screen, you can text to give. And if you want to uh, give by our website, you follow that link provided there for you to uh, give on online. Praise God. Praise God. Well, after hearing the word today, powerful message, shifting your way through life. Maybe your heart is open to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Maybe you've never received him at all in your life, or you might want to rededicate your life. This is a good time to do that, both here in the sanctuary and on online. So I'm going to ask everybody, if you will, bow your heads. Let's pray about salvation. Father, we thank you for the word of God today. We thank you for Pastor Hill being the vessel today to speak the word of God. We thank you for the clarity by which the word of God was spoken. And now, Father, we thank you for those who are unregenerated. We thank you for the unsaved. We thank you that now they're making the decision to make Jesus Christ Lord over their lives. And so, Father, I pray that they will go ahead and confess their sins. And after confessing their sins, Father, I thank you that they will receive Jesus Christ as personal Savior and confess him with their mouth that he is Lord over their lives and in their lives and throughout their lives and I glorify you for this so we thank you Father for those that are in the room that are receiving salvation today and those that are online as well so we glorify you for it in Jesus name we do pray Amen well come on why don't you give God a big thank you for that Amen for those that are becoming born again today Amen Amen Minister Cooks is coming to uh, pray for our offering Amen. She's coming to pray for our offering, after which we will give you the benediction. Let us pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord God, in your son's Jesus' name, we come before you at this portion of the service, Lord God, to offer up, Lord God, our seeds that we have sown, Lord God, by way of, Lord God, tithes and offerings. And we thank you that your word says that it's not about the amount that we sow, but it's about, Lord God, the debts of our faith. Because your word says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, will be given into your bosom. And with the same measure that you use, it shall be measured unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you lift your hands for the blessing? May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his peace. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and your house and cause you to prosper in whithersoever you put your hands. May the Lord make you head and never the tail. May the Lord bless you abundantly. May the Lord cause you to prosper in the ways that you go. And may the Lord give you increase and may the Lord give you favor for life and abundant life. May peace be in your heart and peace be your guide as you go forward through life in Jesus name. Amen. Well come on why don't you give God a big thank you. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's exit the building. Amen. Those that are on my left if you go out these doors. Those in the center you can go out the center. Those to the right can go out to my right. God bless you. Have a great week.